Hi, it's Richard Dwyer. It is May the 26th, 2020. RichardDwyer.com My firm site, keepingitfree.blogspot.com A financial blog I run. Let's talk about the very few facts. And I'll concede. The facts are few and far between. We're just learning them. There's an active police investigation going on as I make this video. But let's talk about the few facts that have come out concerning the death of Ahmad Arbery. Now, here's what we know so far. Right? A father in his mid-60s and his son are both armed, they're in a truck, and they're in pursuit of 25-year-old Arbery, who is wearing a t-shirt and shorts. He's running or jogging, depending on your point of view, through a white neighborhood in Georgia. They catch up with him. There's a confrontation. The driver, the son, hops out of the vehicle and has a shotgun with him. Arbery is unarmed. Arbery and the son tussle a little bit. The father, who used to work for the district attorney's office, is in the bed of the truck looking at what's happening from a distance away the father is carrying on him according to reports and understand these are preliminary reports they may be contradicted later but according to reports the father has a magnum 357 on him well Aubrey and the driver the son tussle over the shotgun that the son has with him and has taken with him out of the car. The son then fires shots as they're tussling that hit Arbery in the torso. Arbery then walks a few feet away. The son doesn't follow him. Arbery walks a few feet away and drops mortally wounded. The McMichaels claim that they acted legally. That there were a series of burglaries in the area and they believed that this black man might be the burglar. So they were in pursuit of him to make a citizen's arrest Right? Also, Arbery was seen coming out of a property, a home that was being built shortly before the shooting. Right? The argument is that they were arresting Arbery because they saw him leave a building of a house under construction. And they then believe that because he was leaving that building, that he may have been responsible for recent burglaries that took place in the area. Right? They are on the phone with law enforcement right before the incident. According to reports, and we'll find out whether they're, they're true, law enforcement told the McMichaels, hey, don't, don't do anything here. The McMichaels did not listen the father gets his son, they hop in the car, they go chasing after Arbery. The incident results in Arbery's death. Now let me just make a few points here because we really have to ask ourselves whether or not the citizen's arrest narrative even makes sense. Right? At this point, all I'm doing in this video is posing some questions. We'll see what the evidence shows us. We'll ultimately make a decision later.
in other videos based on the evidence. Right? But right now, let's just ask a few questions. Greg McMichael, the father, mid-60s, had worked in law enforcement in the past, spoke with the police. Now he would understand more than most, since he worked for the district attorney's office, the importance of being accurate in talking with law enforcement. Right? He told the police that there were a series of burglaries in the area and that he thought that this young black man might be responsible for that series of burglaries. Now USA Today has checked police records from January 1st to April 23rd, right, the period before Arbery's death. And they found that there were no police reports, none of home break-ins. None. I think the first question that has to be asked here is, is there any truth in Greg McMichael's statements to police, to the police, that there was a string of burglaries that led him to believe that this young black man wearing a t-shirt and shorts was responsible for them. Now let's ask some other questions. Did the McMichaels have prior run-ins with Arbery? Was this personal or was this an attempted citizen's arrest of a stranger? Now, according to reports, Arbery jogged the route on a regular basis. In other words, people familiar with the route may have seen Arbery jogging previously. Let me also say, too, that he's wearing shorts and a t-shirt because he's jogging he's clearly unarmed there's a video of his death I encourage everyone here to look at that video he's clearly unarmed right if the McMichaels knew that Arbery jogged that route and would be unarmed in my opinion that would matter especially given that there are two of them and they both decided to carry firearms in their pursuit of Arbery. Let's also look at the crime for which they're pursuing Arbery. Right? We know that there are no reports, no police reports of house break-ins for the preceding seven weeks. We know that. That can be proven. We'll look at the police reports. We'll see if that's correct, right? The argument that Arbery is seen leaving a house construction site needs to be looked at. The first question I have, was anything taken from the house construction site? Understand, we know Arbery doesn't have anything on him. That's obvious. T-shirt, shorts, shoes. Right? He, he has nothing on it. Is anything missing? If, if nothing is missing, if Arbery did not take anything, then... Why the 357 Magnum? And why would the driver have a shotgun? 
Why would there be someone with a camera filming this? Who, according to reports, knew the shooter and knew the father? Let's also look carefully at that construction site. There are reports, and again, we'll find out in the coming days if this is true. There are reports that people stop by that construction site to get water. In fact, there are films. Believe it or not, folks, there's, there's a camera at that construction site. There are films of people stopping at the construction site. Right? My question is, was anything ever taken from that construction site? Under surveillance films, there were even little kids with their parents walking through that construction site. There's a narrative that's been raised that Arbery stopped by the construction site to get water as part of his jog, which was routine. He would jog several times a week. Is the idea of him stopping for water at a construction site at which several people pass through even controversial? Is that the kind of action that would warrant a citizen's arrest? We also need to figure out the McMichaels' awareness of people stopping through the construction scene. Were they aware that other people had stopped by the construction site? If so, why would they single out Arbery? So this leads to my next question. And these are the kind of things I'll be looking at as the evidence here comes out. Is the stated reason for their pursuit of Arbery the actual reason? Right? Were there people who stopped by that construction site who they didn't pursue? Did they have any relationship whatsoever with the construction site? How would they know if they didn't own the construction site? Whether or not a visitor to that construction site did so with or without consent. Let me also ask a few other questions. How did the friend of the McMichaels who took the video know that something was going to happen? Aubrey's not armed. He's wearing shorts and a t-shirt and jogging shoes. Right now, one wonders why two men pursuing one guy would need to be armed. Right? I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment, and I'm wondering, okay, here's a jogger. You have two guys in a truck. Why do they need one gun, much less two guns? Well, folks, they're there with two guns and a cameraman. How did the friend know that something was going to happen? Let me ask another question. Right? Arbery's jogging through the neighborhood. You feel he may have committed a crime. Folks, it's 2020. Right? It's not 1920. It's 2020. Most people, dare I say the vast majority of people, have cell phone cameras. They have cameras on their phone. If I see some guy running away from, I can't even call it the scene of the crime, right? Because nothing might have been taken. This might have been a place with a water fountain. If I see someone leaving a scene and I think they may have committed a crime and I'm in a 
safe vehicle. Right? Keep in mind, there's a guy on the back of the truck who has a Magnum 357. Why didn't he just have a cell phone camera? Why couldn't they have just taken photos of Arbery? Isn't there a guy who actually took a video of Arbery? Why didn't it end there? Why didn't they just say, hey, let's get a picture of this guy? Right? Maybe he's involved in the string of burglaries that were not reported to the police for some reason. Right? The house burglaries that didn't happen. Right? Let's go take a photo of this guy. Why is it more than a photo? Why does the driver have a shotgun? Why does the guy in the back of the truck have a 357 Magnum? Why is there a cameraman? We also need to figure out the conversations they had with law enforcement. Did someone from law enforcement say, hey, that guy might be the son of Sam or whoever, the Zodiac Killer. Stop him at all costs. Bring a shotgun and a 357 Magnum. Don't let this guy leave the area. Right? Did law enforcement encourage these guys to pursue this unarmed guy who is wearing a t-shirt and shorts? Or did law enforcement tell these guys to stand down? Why didn't they stand down? Especially if, in the preceding seven weeks, there were no house burglaries. Let me get to my last question. You're the driver of this vehicle, right? Your father is armed. He's armed in the truck bed, and he's watching you. He has your back. Why would you take the shotgun out of the vehicle? What's the point of that? Why not leave the shotgun at home? Well, if the shotgun's in the car, why not leave the shotgun in the car? and come out yourself. How about trying to talk to the black guy who you've just rolled the truck up on? Right? Did this driver feel that this black guy was going to beat him up with his father there with the 357 Magnum in the bed of the truck? Well, it's even worse than that. So the guy comes out and he has a shotgun. Arbery and him tussle. Arbery has nothing, right? Why would you squeeze the trigger when the muzzle of the gun is pointed at Arbery's torso? If you're gonna shoot Arbery, couldn't you shoot him someplace that would not be fatal like that? Right? If I'm going to shoot a guy in the chest area, I'm going to know that I'm taking out his lungs. I'm taking out his heart. I'm taking away his life. Why would this driver, if he is silly enough to take the shotgun out of the car, and why would he have to take the shotgun out of the car with dad armed, watching the whole thing? But if he's silly enough to take the shotgun out of the car and if Arbery surprises him by actually trying to take the gun away from him, why wouldn't he shoot Arbery in the arm? Shoot him in the leg. Make it clear that his intention is not to kill Arbery. Instead, he shoots him in the torso. Right? Watch the film. Arbery then walks a few feet ahead, falls, mortally wounded. 
the shooter doesn't follow him. This isn't a the gun went off type moment. The shooter's actions are inconsistent with there being a tussle and the gun goes off. Right? He didn't intend to shoot, but in the tussle, his finger may have hit the trigger and the gun, of course, was pointed at Aubrey's vulnerable area. Right? The chest area. Understand, that's not what this video shows. Aubrey walks a few feet away at the end of the video, falls down. The gunman does not walk toward him. The gunman doesn't go over to Aubrey to see if he's okay. Right? The gunman doesn't look remorseful. Doesn't look surprised. Doesn't look like he's thinking, oh man, the gun went off. Oh man. Hope this guy's okay. Right? Especially since these two guys may not have known Arbery. And Arbery was an unarmed man that they rolled up on. No, no, the gunman turns to his father. Look at the video. The gunman turns to his father and walks toward his father. He, he knows he's killed this guy. He has no interest, in my opinion, on how Arbery is. Even though, when he encounters Arbery, Arbery's unarmed. Right, folks? I haven't heard of Arbery having a single thing on him in this incident. That was stolen. That was taken from the construction site. Certainly, I think if most of the people watching this video were in a truck rolling up on Arbery, thinking that he's a suspect in a burglary, at some point, the light would go on and we would say, you know what? This guy just has shorts and a t-shirt. He's not carrying anything. What is he supposed to have robbed from this construction site that doesn't belong to either of the guys in the truck? So, rest assured, I'm going to be looking at this case closely. At first glance, this looks like a murder to me. At first glance, it seems to me that this Greg McMichael guy has lied to the police about there being a series of burglaries, house burglaries, right? Apparently there's one instance of something being robbed out of a car in the preceding seven weeks. I'm not sure what relevance that has since even the guys in the truck here had no reason to believe that Arbery did that crime, right? Understand, he's not seen taking stuff out of a car here. He's seen leaving a house construction site that may not be missing anything that other joggers may have used for its water fountain. Right? So I'm very disturbed. Greg McMichael's link to law enforcement, the fact that he worked for the district attorney's office, makes this case even more troubling. Because he would understand the importance of being truthful with the police. Right? Talking about burglaries when there are no records of even police reports or investigations of burglaries. Right? He would also understand the importance of due process. Unarmed black man, t-shirt and shorts, jogging down the street. There's no reason to roll up on him and have a driver come out the car with a shotgun and have you carrying a three fifty seven Magnum. Folks, I expect that in murder investigations where the person being pursued is wearing clothes and might be armed. I don't expect that here. So I'm troubled by this. We'll see what information comes out. Right? 
Let me say, too, the presence of the cameraman strikes me as awfully strange, given the absence of home burglary reports. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. We'll keep an eye on this case. I'll update this video when more information becomes available. If you feel that I have misrepresented material facts in this video, please, let's use YouTube's feedback comment section to share that information with viewers. Thanks for stopping by.